So, more or less a year after the fuss that they caused the last time round, Extinction Rebellion are back. This time to block the right-wing press from delivering their newspapers, which... All right. Stuff like this usually just feels like an ideological push from a particular subculture of people, rather than this being purely about a science advocacy thing. After all, why oh why does this sort of message continually come from the sort of people that look like the love children of Moby and Wurzel Gummidge have just spilled out from a festival somewhere? I wasn't big on Brexit for a number of reasons. One of them being that I thought having a joint initiative towards climate change in Europe would be better than us going our own way and potentially maybe giving a fuck on our own. People appreciate the concern, right? We understand that it wouldn't be good news to find out that the places that we live in are no longer, you know, livable. But there's only really so much that you can do on an individual level. I can imagine most people getting quite turned off at the thought of maybe not being able to urgently get to hospital beds to sit besides mum as she spends her last few moments on earth, all because a group of people in the middle of the road decided to hula hoop for a greener planet. The climate science is clear! is what Extinction Rebellion keep on telling us. And I'm not gonna dispute that, you know. I'm happy to respect and appreciate what climate scientists tell us. I'm a science fan, hmm? Which is why I also can't stand it when people moan about science and the modern world, but use the internet and smartphones to broadcast their rather nihilistic messages. I was in a relationship with one of these types for the best part of two years. Trust me, I know what I'm fucking talking about. We couldn't ever walk down supermarket aisles and pick up a packet of the heater seasoning and chuck it in the basket like a normal couple. Nah, she's picking up the packet, reading the ingredients at the back going, mm, we can't get this, it's got dextrose in it. Fucking what? Dextrose, 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 dextrose. You fucking should have seen my face when I got home and realised that dextrose was fucking sugar, yet she's reading dextrose like it says fucking Dettol. Do you know what I mean? I don't buy for heater seasoning because of the chemical compounds, but quick tip, it works fucking wonders on the bathroom tiles. They think they're being intelligent, but in my opinion, reading every scientific word you're not familiar with, as if it says bleach, isn't intelligent, right? It's paranoid and fucking pathological. They're the types of people that will sign a petition to ban water, just as long as it's written as dihydrogen monoxide. That's di, hydrogen, monoxide. You know, the types that get rather awe-inspired over heartwarming Instagram stories about some technologically advanced woodland hut, you know, inhabited by some introverted vegan couple, their angelic three-year-old, and a small dog. The rather romantic, yet somewhat repetitive escape from the unnatural horrors of the modern world without any appreciation that it's the free market and horrors of the modern world that enabled such a little technological eco-capsule to be developed in the first place. They claim, right, like fucking blue-faced warriors out of Braveheart to care about the science, yet ask many of these hippy-dippy, somewhat middle-class, naturalistic Mother Earth types what they think about something like vaccinations or biotechnology and you'll end up with a rather unscientific scientific response. Ask them about pest or drought resistant crops or modified rice to prevent people from going blind from vitamin A deficiency and you're more likely to end up hearing a load of scare stories about cancer than any genuine appreciation for how these technologies are helping people avoid mass starvation and malnourishment. Yes, yes, anecdotes should never be taken as gospel. However, I'm fairly confident that amongst many of these protesters will be the crystal healers, the Reiki healers, the self-appointed nutritionists, and those people that convince other people that they can cure their cancer by consuming a weekly litre of their own piss. And I think we've all come across the middle-class mother who sounds fairly well-educated until she comes out with absolute clangers like, yes, well, we did consider the MMR vaccine, but after some deliberation decided that it wasn't quite right for our little Tabitha. Fucking what does that mean? Not quite fucking, what, what? Has she got, has Tabitha got fucking tiger's blood or something? What, has she been hanging about with Charlie Sheen? Hey, fucking don't have to, what, what, does she not get sick? I mean, where the fuck was she born, Krypton? And not quite right, that's a rather snooty way of putting it as well, don't you think? Not quite right. I didn't fucking know measles was classist, but I guess I must fucking be mistaken. Kill these people, right? They don't value evidence that they find inconvenient, but they're ready to lap up without question anything some fucking alternative therapist tells them about the wondrous benefits of pink 
Himalayan rock salt. But then tell them that you're about to season your chips with sodium chloride and they'll fucking look at you like you're about to eat Russia's Novichok nerve agent. They're no different from religious people who dismiss science in favour of creationism and intelligent design. Notice how gracefully it sits over the human hand. Seriously, Kurt, the whole of creation testifies to the genius of God's creative oh, hand. The argument that they make is that science always changes and therefore can't be trusted. Yeah, scientists can usually be a right pain in the ass till one comes along and says the Earth's only 6,000 years old. The same thing happens with environmentalists. They're just as religious, except they believe in the glory of Mother Nature, while the other lot believe in the glory of a genocidal cloud wizard. I've got a personal relationship with the COO of one of England's top car manufacturers. Our conversations about this stuff have only ever really been brief, but when we do have them, he tells me that fossil fuels are gonna be around for a long while yet, simply because the energy efficiency with renewables and electric vehicles is not there yet. Our civilization for the past 200 years has developed based on the energy output of fossil fuels. We understand how much mileage a vehicle is gonna manage, the speed, the transportation times, medicines that need to be delivered, equipment that needs to be transported, food that needs to be distributed. Energy sources unable to keep up with that demand will basically just send us to the fucking dark ages. Extinction Rebellion marching some old boat along the road while another group do fucking yoga and perform circus tricks in the street isn't gonna cause the advancement of energy technology to move any quicker. I'd also like to think that the economics kind of speaks for itself, for the time being at least, right? If we're at a period where we could change our energy supplies without detriment, then wouldn't we be doing it? After all, guilt-free energy seems like something that people would jump all over, but we're not able to yet. Extinction Rebellion have targeted right-wing newspapers for the apparent reluctance to address the climate issue with the urgency it requires. But are Extinction Rebellion's actions really helping any of us truly understand the depth of this issue? The positives and the negatives, the advantages and the drawbacks, the current real world benefits of fossil fuels at this moment in time versus the realities of what we wish to achieve and when we're likely to achieve it. That's a conversation that I'm very, very keen to listen to, but one I have a feeling the rather ideological minds over at Extinction Rebellion aren't interested in having.